Both immigration and the NHS are proving to be hot topics in the run-up to this year's, this December's general election. And that's not really a surprise. They usually are big topics. Uh, and they are, of course, issues that millions of people in the country care a lot about. So let me have a look at the two big parties, Labour and the Conservatives, and their approach to both of these issues, which, of course, are linked. So let's start with the Labour Party. And unsurprisingly, the Labour Party is pro-open borders. We all know this, especially Corbyn's Labour Party. But then again, it was Blair's Labour that opened the floodgates to begin with. Um, to be fair to the Labour Party, they're at least a little bit more honest about this than the Tories are. Um, but I'll get on to that in a minute. The, they have produced a video, which I'll link to below, which was tweeted by Diane Abbott. And I'm sorry, but I had to laugh at this. Essentially, Diane Abbott is holding herself up as an example of fantastic immigration to the UK. Incredible. Uh, the woman hates this country. She hates white people. She can't wait to dismantle it. And she can't wait until the ordinary Brit is in a minority so that she and the Labour Party no longer have to pretend to care about ordinary Brits come election time. Uh, I think it's quite funny that she's putting herself up as an example. And I think really unfair, actually, because a lot of immigrants come here because they love the country and want to be a part of it. So comparing them to Diane Abbott, Really, really unfair. But in this infantile video, they are saying that if you have any concern whatsoever, if you're one of around 70% of the British public, in other words, who is concerned about immigration, what you are doing is blaming immigrants for all society's problems. That's their angle. That's what they're going for. It is, as I say, infantile. We are not. This is not about blaming immigrants. It is absurd to suggest this. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing, in fact, as standing there and pointing ra and shouting racist at anyone who has mild, mild objections even to opening up the country to the whole world. It's not about blaming immigrants. It's about numbers and mathematics and basic common sense. Approximately 300,000 extra people a year in a country means you need to find resources for approximately 300,000 people extra a year. That's an issue. We do not have endless resources. There's also the issue which no party apart from For Britain will talk about when it comes to immigration of culture and preservation of way of life. The British people have a fundamental right to preserve and protect their way of life. Big parties don't talk about this at all. Labour's childish approach is you're all racist and, 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 and you hate immigrants. And on the Tory side, it's all about economics. It's all about bringing in money and, 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 and lowering wages and conditions for working class people by opening the borders to an oversupply of people. So they don't talk about this. It's not important to them. It is important. It's, I would absolutely guess, I'd put a few quid on the 70 odd percent of people in this country who care and are concerned about immigration. I think their way of life and their culture is a huge reason why. We are not driven primarily by economics. Other things matter too. So Labour's approach is what you'd expect. But the Tories are just a Sneaky. I mean, to be fair to Labour, at least they're a bit more honest about this. We know what we're getting with Labour, but the Tories are trying to sound like they will reduce immigration. But they're not saying by how much and they're not saying when or how. One thing they are proposing and sounding a lot like Nigel Farage is an Australian style points system. Now, the first thing to say about that is, have you seen Australia lately? It's not going well. Mass immigration into Australia is not going well. They have huge problems. And the established Australian way of life and culture is under threat. They're, the society is divided. They have a lot of the same problems that we have here in Europe. So Australia, I'm sorry to say, not exactly the best example of immigration to hold up. And a points-based system is fine. It's a way, it's a common sense way of determining who to allow into the country and who not to allow into the country. But here's the thing. 
If you're going to allow 300,000 people in under a points-based system, then what's the difference? And the Tories are not actually saying that they're going to reduce numbers with this points-based system. They just want you to think that they are. And there's a clue in the approach of the Tories in regards to immigration in their approach to the NHS. There is a shortfall currently of 40,000 nurses and 10,000 doctors in the NHS. And the Tories' response to this is to issue NHS visas, which are much cheaper and much easier to come by than other working visas to this country. So in other words, the Tories' answer to a 40,000 nurse shortfall in the NHS is immigration and only immigration. That's it. That's their answer. Now, let's be clear about this. 40,000 extra nurses means 40,000 families of extra nurses means 40,000 more families to be treated by the NHS, which is already creaking at the seams. But here's the thing. Since 2010, since the Tories have been in government, let's not forget that immigration has remained at hundreds of thousands per year since the Tories have been in government since 2010. Also since 2010, 200,000 nurses have left the NHS. We're bringing in 40,000 new families to cover the shortfall, but not addressing the fact that 200,000 nurses have left the NHS under the Tory government. Why? Because they're overworked and underpaid. Now, the NHS pays out thousands and thousands and thousands, millions, in fact, per year, on ridiculous procurement and on management consultancy. Why aren't they paying that money to the nurses? Why aren't they making it so that 200,000 nurses don't leave the NHS and then we won't have this shortfall? This isn't being addressed. The answer, 40,000 nurses, immigration. That's it. Nothing. Let's not address the absolute shambles inside the NHS that's making 200,000 nurses leave it. There's also a shortfall in the NHS of 10,000 doctors all of which the Tories want to replace or to, to fill those places with immigration. Last year, 12,000 young British medical students were denied stu uh, medical school places despite having the grades to do the course. So we have 12,000 students with the grades to do medicine being denied places while we're importing 10,000 doctors. Does anyone see a problem with this? That's not being discussed either. And something else that isn't being discussed is the qualifications of the 10,000 doctors who are coming here from Africa, from Asia. How do I, look, this is going to be controversial to say, but how do we know how qualified these people actually are? How do we know uh, whether they are suitable to be doctors in a British hospital. I've worked in hospitals and you know I don't mean to be rude or mean or cruel uh, but some of the doctors, yes they speak English uh, but you can hardly understand what they're saying uh, because the accents are so strong, uh, there may be massive cultural differences so that people who go to see the doctor don't feel they can open up and frankly don't understand a lot of what this doctor is saying to them. That's the harsh truth and that's not addressed either. So we have a 10,000 doctor shortfall, we import 10,000 doctors without addressing the fact that young British, brilliant young students who want to go to medical school are not getting those places. It's the same old stuff from the Tories. They just Throw, just throw open the doors. We have a problem, throw open the doors. Let's not deal with the internal issues that are causing that shortfall in the first place. And as for the approach to the NHS, will Labour and the Tories exactly the same? Let's throw more money at it. They're wasting Money's at, they're wasting money at obscene levels at the moment. So why are you giving them more money? And it's unconditional money as well. It's handing over billions of your pounds to NHS managers who have already shown themselves to be completely inept at spending it. Throw money at it. Bring in more people. That's the answer. No, it is not. The answer is to start training young people. Britons to be doctors. The answer is to make it so that NHS nurses, overworked, 
underpaid are not overworked and underpaid. Let us, this is a scandal that 200,000 nurses have left the NHS in nine years. A scandal. Let's start treating the nurses a little bit better. Let's start paying them some of the ridiculous amounts we are paying out to managers and consultants. And I don't mean medical consultants. I mean the money that NHS managers pay to bring in management consultants to tell them how to do their job. That's the problem. Let us stop wasting public sector money. Let us start investing in our own young people. Let us start making life a little bit easier for NHS nurses. And we wouldn't have these problems in the first place. And that we wouldn't need to open the border to all and sundry to fix problems that we can easily fix in other ways. Once again, For Britain is the only party addressing these issues. We're the only ones saying that immigration crisis can only be solved by training our own people. You do not leave, throw your own people on the rubbish tip and replace them with immigrants. That is not the way a country which cares about its country, its people, actually works. We are the only ones talking about the cultural aspects of this. We are the only ones talking about the basic common sense numeracy of this. We are the only ones providing answers for the long-term health of this country. It's the same old, same old out of both Labour and the Tories and we need to really, really change this. This two-party state cannot go on forever. Common sense and pro-Britain policies will change it and only common sense and pro-Britain policies will change it. We have that party, join it.